Good afternoon to you. The weather may have intervened at Pitodri yesterday, but no problems with our big games at Rugby Park, where Kilmarnock took on Dundee United, nor at Tynecastle, where hearts were unstoppable against Infermline. Highlights of both of those games coming up, plus the best of the rest in yesterday's Bank of Scotland SPL. And I'm joined here in the studio today by Dundee United midfielder David Hanna, and a warm welcome back to these shores to Dave McPherson. But before we get down to the SPL action, we are looking for two team mascots to lead out Kilmarnock and Celtic, the finalists in the CIS Insurance Cup final on Sunday, 18th of March at Hamden. The two winners will be kitted out in team colours to lead their team onto the field, and they'll also win three additional tickets to take family or friends along to watch the game. So if you are 12 years of age or under, this is what you have to do to have a chance of winning. Just tell us who were the beaten semi-finalists in this year's CIS Cup. Now, if you know the answer and you want to be the Kilmarnock mascot, phone us on 09009100016. And if you would prefer to lead Celtic out, phone us on 09009100017. Tell us the answer and leave us your name, address, age and the number we can phone you back on today. The lines are only open till 3.45 this afternoon and we'll tell you who the winners are at the end of today's programme. And remember, before you dial, get permission from whoever's paying the bill. And you can find all the details of our competition on our Scotsport website at www.scotsport.co.uk. And now to yesterday's SPL action in the match at Tynecastle between Hearts and Dunfermline. The Pars having leapfrogged Craig Levine's side in the league midweek to go fifth, and looking forward, of course, to that cup replay with Celtic. Our man at Snowy Tyne Castle was David McKinney. At half past two, there was a real chance this game might have gone off, but Hearts fans will be delighted it didn't. Coming up, one of the most amazing games you will ever see. In Fairman's fifth match in two weeks proved a game too far for Jimmy Calderwood's men. Static defending allowed Stefan Adam in after just five minutes. It's a great start for Hearts and for Adam, whose season has been blighted by injury. Just over 20 minutes gone and nothing untoward for Dunfermline apart from the goal, but they managed a couple of attacks themselves. This from Scott Thompson, but the roof was about to fall in for these supporters. Hart's second goal was all about movement on and off the ball. The movement with the ball supplied by Andy Kirk, and when his pass found a dam, Kirk's off the ball run was rewarded. Adam was outstanding for the home side, while Kirk continues to show what a talent he's becoming. This goal was all about the build-up, and within a minute, Kirk should have added a third for Hearts. But it wasn't long before the third goal did arrive. Andy Todd and Ian Ferguson had been replaced by Jimmy Calderwood by this time. Bobby Nielsen's through ball, knifed through a thin back line. Marco Rutenbeek spooned it. Food and drink for Colin Cameron. By now, the Hearts fans were lapping it up, but it was stodgy stuff from the visitors' defence. That was bad enough for Dunfermline, but they made life difficult for themselves against a Hearts side hungry for more. And again, the marking was non-existent as Adam volleyed his second and Hart's fourth. <laughs> Stephen Boyack with the assist, Hart's four up and still five minutes until half-time. And that was enough time for another chance for Kirk. The move starting in their own penalty area and another example of growing confidence in this Hart side. Kirk's shot was tipped over for a corner. Four nil at half time, and whatever Calder would said to the Dunfermline players at the interval was immediately forgotten. When it's not your day, the breaks just don't go for you, and that was the case again just 40 seconds after the restart. A poor touch from Justin Skinner, a better one from Adam, another poor touch by Rutenbeek, and a tap in for Cameron. If Rutenbeek was unhappy, it can only have been with himself, showing what not to do against a side on form. 
The spirit might have been willing, but the flesh was weak for a tired looking Dunfermline side, although they rallied briefly for Jason Dare to score neatly. But you know, it's a strange day when a consolation goal comes as early as the 50th minute. But there was more to the afternoon than the goals. This next Hearts move will go down as the one that got away. Kirk and Adam got away from the markers all right, but luckily for Andy Kirk, he'll miss what happens next because he's flying out on international duty this afternoon. Is this the miss of the season? Well, Peter Van Vossen eat your heart out. Although Kirk didn't let his head go down and after making the easy look hard, he made the difficult look easy. The one-two is with Tomacek. The finish is all his own. Still keeping count. Well, that's 6-1 for Hearts. And at last, a smile from Craig Levine. Once again, the movement from Kirk creates the opening. And this is a better finish from four yards. If Craig Levine was happy with his side finishing, he would have been equally pleased with his goalkeeper. Antoniemi had little to do but demonstrated his qualities when called upon. This save from Stevie Crawford. Robert Tomaszek came on as a substitute. He's not known for his goal scoring abilities, just three in 42 games, but he came mighty close to adding to that total. You know, things could have been so much worse for Dunferman. Tomaszek inches away from a seventh. But then again, things might have been slightly better for the Pars if Niemi hadn't been in such good form. Andreas Skerla denied this time. And Niemi set things rolling for the seventh. Not for the first time, Dunferman were unable to keep possession. Tomaszek made the most of the break and made it look easy in the end. Seventh heaven for Hearts, Dunfermline well beaten and what was a day to forget for them. But there was more drama to come. Adam, who had shown great touches and awareness, was taken off with a thigh injury that threatens to keep him out for some time. His departure taking some of the shine off the day. But everyone, it seems, was having a go. Kieran McInesby came on and produced one of 27 shots at goal for Hearts. And again, it was a narrow miss. Hearts could easily have hit double figures here with Kirk's miss, the bar and the post both being hit and Kirk pulled up here for offside. Akinesby's shot was the width of the post away from a goal and although there were defiant noises being made by the hardcore and Fermland fans who waited until the end, by that time it wasn't just the points that were in the bag. This will be remembered for a long time by the fans, the players, and by Craig Levine. Pleased with your own performance, two goals, could have been more? Yeah, I could have had a hat trick, but at the end of the day, you know, getting on the score sheet is an added bonus, and the important thing for us was we all played well as a unit, and that was really pleasing. And if in the last few games as well, we've been threatening to do that, we've created a lot of chances, we just haven't taken as many chances, but today everything went went for us today. We did take the chances when they came along and, you know, fully deserve, deserved the victory. Craig, uh, I think there's no doubt that was the best performance from Hearts under your managership. Well, I don't think there's there's any doubt about that. I felt that we, we played particularly well today. Uh, and our work rate was, was exceptional. It's been better in recent weeks and, and today it was uh, exceptional. Has Craig Levine made quite a difference to the side? No, I, th I think he basically it works on you know shape a lot more uh, since he's came to the club. You know than maybe what Jim Jeffries did, uh, and I think as a unit, you know we're starting to look a little bit more solid. Um, you know, like I say we've got we've got Rangers at Ibrox, and that'll be a fair test after after the kind of result that we got today. It'll be a totally different game, uh, but we'll go into it with confidence. And if you can't go into a game with confidence after winning seven one in the previous game, then there's something wrong. Absolutely. David McKinney was a busy boy at Tynecastle yesterday. I've got two Davids with me here in the studio, Dave McPherson and David Hanna. 
Dave, you were at Tyne Castle yesterday, an amazing performance from Hearts. It was a fantastic performance by Hearts and Critical Green will be obviously delighted by the result. They created so many chances on the day mm. and uh, it hit the nail on the head there and they said it was hard work because right from the word, the word go, they worked very hard and got their award right away with a couple of early goals. And as David McKinney pointed out, I think they had 27 shots on, well, at least that goal anyway. Yeah, definitely. I mean, everybody was in the act, even Stephen Presley won the field <laughs> at one point to try and get a goal. The key thing about that game yesterday, David Hanna, was that Dunfermline had been playing well up until yesterday. Amazing scoring. Yeah, that's right. They've been going really well in the league of late. And I watched them against their team about a fortnight ago. And they looked really compact at the back. But obviously, in the evidence there, they were a wee bit uh, slack at the back there. So a uh, great result for Hearts uh, and Craig Levine. All credit to him. What about Stefan Adam, Dave? He had a great game yesterday. Unfortunately, injured towards the end, but he contributed so much. Yeah, he's made, he's made a big difference um, since he came back from injury and he takes his goal really well, a great strike. But he could have had a hat-trick as well yesterday, uh, but just disappointing that he ended off uh, getting injured. Hearts have certainly missed him, haven't they? They have. He's running off the ball, he's excellent. But not only that, he holds the ball up and brings a lot of other players into the game. Mm. Uh, him alongside um, Andy Kirk, he certainly um, a potent strike force for Hearts. Yeah, he, di he didn't just score yesterday, uh, David, he actually set goals up as well, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. He actually brought in a few players as well into the game. And as you see here as well, just a little shot across the goal here brings in. And it's a great finish there from Colin Cameron. I know you've watched a few Hearts games since you came back from Australia, Dave McPherson, since we've got too many Davids in the <laughs> studio. Um, Andy Kirk, how impressed have you been with him? Yeah, he works very hard. He um, holds the ball well up front. But he's running off the ball is, is excellent. And he, he likes to take players uh, on. A little, a little bit greedy at times, but maybe that's just the youngness in them. Um, a great uh, finish here, mm -hmm. as we'll see. But uh, again, he could have had a hat trick, but it's all down to work great. If your strikers are working hard and holding the ball up and getting themselves into the box, then they'll get goals. And you wouldn't fancy seeing this one again? No, no that, that's more of a McPherson miss, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, as David McKinney said, he's off on international duty, so hopefully um, you'll maybe catch that when he puts the video back on. Anti Nyemi didn't have a lot to do yesterday, Dave McPherson, but a couple of great saves went, you know, close to the end of the match. Uh, since I've come back and watched Anti Nyemi, he's been most impressive. Uh, again, he's not had a lot to do in the games I've seen, but anything he does do, you know, he certainly keeps the ball out of the mm. net, and that's the most important thing you can ask of your goalkeeper. But two fantastic saves from headers that definitely should have been goal round. How do you think that will affect Infermline? Because they've got some big games coming up, David. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, uh, they'll have to obviously get things sorted out in the, in the next week in training. Uh, but I think uh, they've done really well all season. And I think uh, they'll put that behind them as quickly as possible and look forward to the next game. They probably could play that today if they could manage it. Hearts going to Ibrox next week, Dave McPherson. That's another big one for them. But they go there, as Colin Cameron said on the tape, they're full of confidence. Yeah, I mean, they're creating that many chances. They've got a lot of width now, and they're getting good quality balls into the box. And the two strikers, unfortunately, Stefan Adams injured, but um, somebody else will come in there, and if they're getting that, those amount of chances, it doesn't matter who you're playing against, they'll eventually take some. Right.